Okay, so two things. Um, anyone that has their laptop, um, open it up if, if you want to follow along. If you have a laptop, it would be great if you want to follow along. But what I did was, because just in case the internet was not going to be exactly where we wanted it to be in terms of speed, I screenshotted everything, okay? And it's available on my blog now. You can pull down the PowerPoint and just follow along with the screenshots. Um, let me give you the link to the blog. It is blog.slingalibi.com. So if you go there, you'll find the PowerPoint that I'm delivering now. Everything is screenshotted as much as I can. If the network allows me, I will do everything live for you. In case it doesn't, everything is screenshotted. So you have two options. One is follow along with your laptop, so it's a tutorial, that'll be fun. And two is to um, follow along with the screenshots either behind me or by downloading the presentation. Okay, so my name is Osley Bilgin. I'm the Director of Web Strategy for the Developer Platform and Evangelism Group in Microsoft. And what that means is that I cover a country, a region of 80 countries, and work with posters, developers, designers, to make sure that we are uh, evangelizing the best of breed technologies that Microsoft has. We have a team of 70 plus people scattered throughout MIA. Um, we have obviously a team in Lebanon, and um, hopefully, ideally, in your country as well. So I'm happy to connect you with your local resources. resources. And then there's me as well. Um, and we work in partnership with our groups in Microsoft for communication sector that do telcos, mobile, cloud. We work in partnership with our product teams that do server, Windows Server, SQL Server, et cetera. So my background, as you can tell from my accent, from the US, but born in Istanbul, but lived in Manhattan the last 10, sorry, it's minus the last year, the 10 years before that in New York, covering, um, I was a developer and an architect covering financial services, Wall Street applications for Swiss banks, building applications that I'm going to hopefully show you today. Uh, so I come from a technical background, but for the last year I've been in Dubai and covering more of a strategy role. So now, and now I play developer on TV. I'm no longer writing great code. But today what I want to show you is going from zero to a live app. When I did this, I wrote this slide deck last night. This didn't exist until, I don't know, around 8 o'clock last night. So what I did, when I did this myself very quickly, it took me about maybe 13 minutes to finish. When I'm going to show it to you, obviously I'm going to go slowly and I'm going to explain things, so ideally it'll take a bit of time to show you uh, how to do this, but when, when, in my role, uh, because I cover this, this big region of 80 countries, I also get to see the entrepreneurs, the web entrepreneurs, design agencies, ISPs, uh, what they're doing in terms of um, application development. This is kind of a population map of, like the more purple it is, the greater the population. And I found in, especially in Turkey, in Egypt, in South Africa, uh, there's a lot of innovation that's going on with the web in terms of opening up online shops, uh, travel agencies, social networking. Um, but what I'm seeing is everybody's building it from scratch each time. Very, very custom development. And some of the applications that I've seen, like here's some that are from Jordan, uh, are not using, if you, look, if you look at these sites, I mean, they're, they're very robust sites. They have, uh, when I did the Alexa searches and ranking for them, they have sometimes one million users, uh, unique users a month. So these aren't small little sites. But what I found was a lot of them, this is just what's in Turkey. Um, they're not using integration with Facebook, with Twitter. They're not necessarily using the free applications that we have on PHP and ASP.NET that I'm going to kind of give you a taste of today. And that's fine, but it's slightly unfortunate because it might take you two months to go to market when it could take you, for me last night, 13 minutes to go to market. So the goal of what I'm showing you today, Web Matrix, is both for ASP, it's for PHP, ideally obviously on Windows, um, to help you get your apps running very quickly. Earlier this, uh, today, I talked about the importance of building applications, not websites. A website could have 100 readers, and they might go away when your content is not updated. But if you have a, a 100 users of an application, likely they're going to be more sticky and more loyal and more likely to stay with you. Uh, so this morning when I brought up that concept, I talked about IE9 and pinning and making your pages features, not pages, not bookmarks, but rather tasks that people can do. Um, 
so this is what I've seen. I, got, I get to explore and, and, and look at these. The other thing that I get to do in my role is work with telcos, like Etisalat and do in, in Dubai, Tunis Tunisiana and Tunis, and work with them to create opportunities for free or supremely discounted hosting for entrepreneurs. So besides the platform, we have the tools that we're giving you for free. This is Web Matrix. I'll show you that in the tutorial. We are creating hosting offers to get your hosting here in, in this region. Um, I'm noticing a lot of these sites, ex with the exception of Turkey, a lot of these host sites are hosted in Germany, US, UK, which means that the GDP from that hosting business is going to other countries instead of going to these countries. And after I met with these, these companies face to face. I've seen their buildings, they're earthquake proof, they're, they have redundancy layers, so there's no reason. I know there's bandwidth issues, but there's no reason why in many of the countries, for example, Egypt, Turkey, uh, Jordan, that we can't do hosting in, in here, in this region. So what we want to do at Microsoft is subsidize the, the problems that we have. Like in Pakistan, electricity is super expensive. Um, in Morocco, it's bandwidth that's expensive. In South Africa, there's latency. So what we want to do is subsidize for the next coming years so that when the technology is there, that we keep our business in this region. So when you get your business online, you don't bring the revenue over to the US, UK, Germany, Netherlands, Canada, and you keep it in, in MIA. Um, so, so two points of that. One is you know, in, increase your reach with social networking, which I'm gonna show you again with these web helpers. Two is use the free tools that we have available, that the deals that we created with the telcos, with the web hosters. And then three, which is an idea for you that I don't know if it will work, but I think it might, is taking the hosting that's available at discount now, <laughs> taking the applications that I'm gonna show you. Today I'm gonna to show e-commerce, because I make money off of e-commerce. So instead of showing you how to create a blog, I'm gonna show you how to create a shop. But what you can do is you can be the go-to provider of online retail. So what you can do, instead of marketing hosting as saying, 100 gigabytes of storage, 400 gigabytes of RAM, blah, 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 very technical, um, instead, what you can say is, ladies, students, um, get your business online. And then you could be the go-to provider of creating shops for people in Jordan, creating shops for people in Egypt, or creating blogs for people that want to have a voice, but they don't know how to use technology. So that's, that's the goal today, I hope. Uh, I'm going to show you just an example of what, what this region looks like, and then we'll go straight into tutorial. So for those of you that joined late, if you want to open up your laptop, uh, we can follow along in the tutorial. Alternatively, you can go to my blog, blog.slingalibi.com, pull down this PowerPoint and just follow along or use the, the map behind me. So this is the, um, the world as it stands uh, today, uh, as of 2010, um, on, in terms of social media penetration. The blue is Facebook. Um, so you can get an idea in terms of what, how to extend your reach and where to extend your reach with. So today I want to show you how to do it on your own with your own application that you do own. But what I want to also show you is if you have an article, a product you're selling, a page that you're, you're writing some information on, you can extend this through Facebook. And what we did was we partnered Bing, our search engine, and Facebook partnered together so that when you're doing a search, for example, on a South Africa, you know, South African stickers or, or um, Windows Phone 7. When you do this search today, a lot of, not today, but four months ago, a lot of times what would happen is the search engine optimized providers would have their stuff, like Gizmodo, always ends up in the top. But you would think a product that Microsoft creates, Microsoft.com would be at the top, but it's not, Gizmodo is, because they're excellent at optimizing their searches so they float to the top. What that means for you and my mom and people that are just users trying to get information is that it gets irrelevant after time. It's people that are promoting something. It's not really what you wanted. So what we did was uh, we worked with Facebook together that when you do a search on Bing for Windows Phone 7, you'll actually see the likes and what your friends say about Windows Phone 7. Not anybody, just your friends. Uh, assuming that you build, you know, uh, allow access for Bing and Facebook and you're logged in, that now you'll see just what your friends like. Um, a good example, I met this company in Egypt that uh, Levi's, Levi's, they work for Levi's as their customer for blue jeans. You go into the Levi's store on Facebook, 
and all you see is the blue jeans that your friends have liked. Um, you don't see just random things that people are trying to promote to you. Instead, you get the power of, of word of mouth, which is, which is this uh, cartoon. This is from the New, York, New Yorker magazine, which I'm, you know, being a New Yorker, I like. Um, but what, what I envision this to be is, picture this being Times Square, and then there's two people sitting here about to, you know, have a drink and, and chat with each other, and all around them is advertisements for a certain product. All they see is, you know, there's a guy walking around shaped like a soda can, there's a van walking by with a soda can, billboards everywhere, and then the waiter comes up and says, what will you have? And he looks at what his friend's having, which is completely different, and says, I'll have what she's having. So this, again, is the power of word of mouth. You, you get inundated with advertisements and marketing and, and search engine optimization, social network optimization. People are being paid sometimes to like things. But instead, what, what you can do is just leverage the power of word of mouth. Another caveat that I'll point out to you is that it's ever-changing. This social network, social media world is always changing. This is only a few years ago, 2007, in terms of what the world looked like uh, in terms of social media and social networking. And you saw that MySpace, everybody you know, was talking MySpace, MySpace. They spent a lot of money buying MySpace. And then later, when we came to 2010, that changed quite a bit. And Facebook came out of nowhere. Not nowhere, per se, but in terms of market penetration, they grew considerably. And they became now the go-to provider. However, we don't know what's going to happen by 2015. We don't know what's going to happen in the next two years uh, in terms of what's going to change. Obviously, Microsoft and Goldman and a few others believe in Facebook as being that answer, but you, you don't know. So what I would recommend to you is take advantage of these application frameworks that I'm going to show you today. They're free. They're PHP. They're ASP.NET. You'll, you'll own them. Ideally, host them here in MIA. Own Make sure that the revenue stays, their GDP stays in country, and then extend them through Facebook. And then later it might be somebody else, like a, who, who knows who the next uh, social network uh, provider is going to be. But extend through that, but own the IP, own the property, keep the revenue in country. If you don't think that you have a deal with hosting in, in your country, let me know, and hopefully we can make that happen and provide it. Uh, this is what I mentioned earlier. When you're doing a search on Bing, which is our, does anyone use Bing? Does everyone know Bing? No? Okay, good. I noticed a lot of people use Google here. In, in, the, in the US, in the US it's, 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 it's Bing is, we're doing very strong advertisement. So when I, when I asked that question, a lot of people raised their hand. But anyway, Bing allows you, when you do a typical search, like for example, what I said earlier, when I do a search for Windows Phone 7, Gizmodo pops up at the top not because Gizmodo is the go-to source for Windows Phone 7 information, is that they created meta tags and optimized their site with the crawlers, including Bing, to pop up in, in the top. But what I see, like for me, like when I was preparing to do a Windows Phone 7 talk in Jordan a few months ago, I did this search. I'm like, ah, I don't care what Gizmodo says. I want to I wanna find our stuff. But what I found is like my colleague Tim Huckabee in Florida did a, a, a video interview about Windows Phone 7. My, my teammate, Renat, as talks about the Windows Phone 7 challenge, which is a contest that we had launched at the time. So this, for me, is much more relevant than going to see what Gizmodo has to say about Windows Phone 7. That's useful, that's good, but I would go to Gizmodo if I wanted that information. In, in this case, having that integration with my Facebook friends, my personal friends, my, my network, make, makes it useful. In September, Last September, um, I was at one of the airports and I see this on the newsstand in the front cover. And my job, my title on my business card says web strategy director. And I'm like, oh no, don't tell my manager, you know, let me hide these. I'm like, what do you mean the web is dead? That's my job. And then I read further into the article. Uh, what they're saying, and we, this was said earlier um, this morning on the panel that we had with mobile devices, um, is that the, the web, in terms of how it's going to be accessed is going to change from being going through the browser through search engines and instead going through semi-closed platforms. Semi-closed platforms, what that is, is an app. And you heard earlier in the panel today that the mobile devices, most of the penetration is going through applications, not going directly to the browser. And going forward by 2014, when you're consuming, don't you want a phone like this? One day. 
Um, but when, when uh, you consume the internet through the phone, by 2014, it's going to be primarily through the phone, not through the PC. And again, this morning we said that the smartphone growth in this region, in MIA, doubled um, in the last three months. And 20, about 16 to 20% of that is coming through applications. So you expect that to grow. So everything that I'm showing you here today, I just want to encourage the fact that uh, create applications, not websites, not a bunch of pages, um, but instead activities. So I'm going to talk, I'm not going to talk too much about this. I'm going to go dire directly into the tutorial. But what the web app gallery is, is about 40 plus applications that you can download. They're all free. They're half PH, not half, but some PHP, some ASP.net. Um, and they have different categories, whether it's commerce, whether it's Wikipedia, blogs, um, content management sites that you can download. What I'm looking for, especially in this region, that I have funding for is the Arabic, the French, the, the localized versions of these languages. Um, we ideally, I hope, will have uh, WordPress Arabic coming out in the next couple of weeks. We have uh, blogengine.net Turkish already out. So the more you can help me identify localized versions of these applications, the, grateful, the more grateful I will be. And also, if you see an app that, like, that you like, that you think will be relevant in Arabic or in the, in, in the local languages, let me know, and, and we'll find the right partner to translate it. So we support you know, the MIA languages. It's just that we're having a hard time finding the developers that are uh, sub, uh, localizing them or creating brand new ones. And they don't have to be the ones that you already see. They can be something completely new. <clears throat> and another thought for you is, although they're given away for free, what you can do if you want to monetize this is that you can give them away for freemium, freemium, like premium, freemium. Um, what that means is that you'll give them away for free, but if they want extra fancy features or support or whatever, then they pay some subscription fee. So you can get your name out that way, and it's worldwide. It gets 2.5 million unique users a month, this gallery. So you can really exp expand your reach. It doesn't have to be in Arabic. It can be in English. Whatever language you, you prefer, as long as you think that there's a demand for it and that it follows, there's four simple guidelines that if you're a developer, you know that it you know, looks like a, an app that people are comfortable with. So that's kind of like the big picture um, about what I think the opportunities are in this region, what I think that maybe you guys can do in terms of taking advantage of them, whether it's becoming like a baby hoster or creating your own customized version of a gallery um, for your own web properties instead of creating something from scratch, use something in the gallery, or potentially being the creator of something completely new. So let's start with the, the tutorial. Um, I'm going to try to stay in screenshots for now, and then later I'm going to jump into live demo mode. Typically when I do this, I do this live, but um, I'm worried that the internet connection being slow is not going to allow us to get through everything in time. But this stuff is pretty easy. So if you go to microsoft.com forward slash web, and by the way, in this PowerPoint, at the bottom of every slide, you'll find the links. I, I, I provided them for you so you don't feel like you have to take notes. That's available. So what you have is at the very top where it says English, this is where the drop down occurs where you can pick different languages and the whole entire interface turns into a different language as well as the applications that you download. If it's available in that language, will be available. We're not doing as good of a job in MIA as I would like. Russia, China, Korea, they're much more advanced than us in terms of what they've done with localizing these. I, I'd like to do better here. Um, and then what you, what you have is the ability to see different categories whether it's a, a wiki application, CMS. None of these names should be super unfamiliar to you. You've heard of WordPress, Drupal, Joomla. These, these aren't completely brand new applica applications. But what we've done is made it easy for you, once you take them, to customize them and then deploy them to a hoster in this region, ideally for free or at least you know, discounted very heavily. And then for the developers in the room, there's a, there's a button called Submit App that you can submit your application. If you're going to do this, email me so I can help expedite the process and make sure we don't have a lot of people that speak all the languages that we speak in this region, so sometimes it slows things down. But if it's English, obviously, it'll, it'll get approved faster. What happens is when you submit it, it goes through this quality assurance process with our engineers in Redmond to make sure it's compatible. And then it goes to all the hosters worldwide, worldwide. 
and make sure those each of those hosters can support your application and then they can offer their application through something called website panel which is a control panel for hosters it's free and your application will now be exposed to the world via this this panel so that's why if you email me, I can try to push that process a, a bit further. Also, the gallery is available through ASP.net. This is our most popular form in terms of web development. When they click this download button, this is also where you will see the applications that are available. And as well as uh, IIS.net, which is more for like the IT pro infrastructure person, those applications are also available. For anyone that's doing hosting or that works at a telco, is interested in doing web hosting, we have a free, it's open source, uh, community built website panel that you can integrate into your hosting environment. Even if you host at home with your own personal server, you can use this to manage your mail, your FTP, all the applications in the gallery, and um, manage the users that access them, whether it's just you or not. So to get started, in, in terms of what you need to install, um, the, your one-stop shop for everything is the Web Platform Installer. The Web Platform Installer allows you to get the tools, the database, the web server, the applications, and all the extras that come along with it in one single interface. You just check what you want, and it pulls them down. So the first thing you want to do, which will happen automatically when you uh, look at any of the products I'm showing you today, you'll get this. This is free. It'll be on your desktop. You can actually skin this if you'd like and offer it again as a, as a hoster to other um, customers of yours. Once that's installed, you'll be able to install Web Matrix. Okay, Web Matrix is, is, we have Visual Studio, which is very fancy and very heavy. How many people are using Visual Studio? Okay, about half the room. Okay, so for the other half of the room that doesn't use Visual Studio but wants something super lightweight but not Notepad or something mega lightweight, um, this is Web Matrix, both for ASP.NET, for PHP, and we also introduced a new syntax called Razor, which allows you to write very, very lightweight code um, to create websites. And what happens is when you load Web Matrix, you can create, I'll show you this momentarily, you can create a new project from scratch, or you can pull something down from an existing template or an existing app from the gallery that I said. So I would also encourage you in this region to help create templates um, for specific usage scenarios, maybe a consulting shop, maybe a invoicing site, maybe an expense reporting site. These are templates that you can create and we can integrate into the product. So let me, uh, I'm gonna try to jump, I'm gonna come back to this, but I'm gonna try to jump into demo mode here. Um, and, and if the internet allows us, I'll, I would, I'd like to stay out of screenshots. But this is the web platform installer. Uh, this, again, is your one-stop shop for applications. Um, you'll be able to install not just applications that I mentioned, but also the products. And again, this is all free. Um, this is dynamically updated. You can see it's a little slow right now, but it's dynamically updated from the web. So any, anytime something new comes out, you'll see it here. You won't have to feel like you're searching in 5,000 million sites to get the latest and greatest technologies for web. And it provides um, both, again, ASP, MySQL, SQL, PHP support. So you'll see these here, um, whether it's something like a component like URL, URL rewrite, that's a small little add-in that's in there, or whether it's like PHP 5.2 that's available. When you select an application, it will automatically pull the components that it needs to run. So if you're going to pull down like Joomla or Embraco, it'll automatically pick up MySQL and PHP and bring it down onto your machine. Likewise, uh, once you have the applications, you can sort through them the way I showed you previously is what kind of applications they are. Whether it's a blog engine, whether it's a content management system, e-commerce. What I'm going to show you today is NOP Commerce. I totally picked this at random. Um, I could have shown you anything, but I thought this was a good one because I personally like actually like online shopping and selling. I sell jewelry, so I took some of the jewelry that I like to sell that I built my own system for, and I'm actually planning in the next coming months to migrate everything from my internal SQL database over to NOP Commerce. So this is something that I want to use. I experimented it with, la with it last night. I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. It's a little bigger than what I needed, but I think um, it's gonna serve my purposes. So that's why I picked this. 
And also I picked it for the second reason that perhaps that if you use it, you can monetize it. I met a lot of people today that are having you know, online shops or bookstores or selling clothing online. Um, this could be potentially a framework that you could use. Alternatively, we have forums in, uh, in terms of allowing you to build your own community. You might run a user group. You might want to use this for your employees internally. You can use these frameworks to create forums online. You can customize them. You can use them as is, if you'd like. This one I like a lot, this category, galleries. Uh, I was in, I don't know which airport, but an airport, and I got this camera, which is here, that I don't know how to use. So I got a digital photography magazine, and I open it up, like two pages in, full page advertisement from a hoster in the UK, and this magazine is being sol sold in Dubai or so one of the countries I was in, and it's marketing to our region to go do hosting in UK, saying like, hey, are you a videographer? Do you want to stream your videos online? We'll give you hosting three months for free if you mention this ad type of thing. And I'm like, so what are they doing in my region? We have these apps available. We can certainly localize them if we need to. And we can use our hosters and keep the money in, in this region versus having the UK market to us. There's a lot of money to be made in video streaming and video content. If you imagine the storage capacity that's needed, cloud is a perfect uh, example for distributing that content. And then ideally, the phone is going to be where you're going to read it. Uh, you heard today that Saudi is number one in terms of YouTube consumption. So video is, I, I think, another big opportunity. And these galleries, I actually don't have a recommendation here because I haven't tried them all. But these galleries support photo and video galleries. So uh, take a look at them. Tell me what you think. If you think that it deserves to be translated into a local language, we can do this. But these are the four choices that you have for galleries as well. And we're happy to upload any that you create. And uh, otherwise, there's tools that allow you to do like zooming and, and some of the things that I showed earlier in the demo. And then likewise, there's, there's wikis um, for content management and allowing people to update content. So what I did um, last night was I went to e-commerce and I took the N NOP commerce and I said add. And I added this. So it's already on my machine now. I'm not going to do it twice. It took about, uh, on the poor bandwidth that I had last night, it took me about five minutes to get everything down onto my machine. Um, in Dubai, it took me like 30 seconds. So again, it depends on your bandwidth. It's not, it's not huge, it's eight, you know, 18 megabytes. And I downloaded it on the, onto my machine. And then what I did was I launched Web Matrix. So I'm going to go ahead and close this. And Web Matrix, once, once you install it, it's an app on your machine. Okay, so I guess the best way to think about it is a, it's a developer source code editing tool, lighter than Visual Studio, but intended for the novice person that's new to Microsoft, or the PHP developer, or somebody that just really wants to do quick code editing, and they don't necessarily need the whole power of enterprise relational management databases and connectors and web services and cloud. This is your lightweight tool. So, so once you launch a web matrix, let me actually close a couple apps. It provides you the choices of how, how you want to utilize it. So you can actually go to, go to my sites, which is basically existing sites, either on my hoster or my local hard drive. It comes with a lightweight version of IIS. It used to be Cassini, but it has a, a baby web server that runs on an arbitrary port on your machine so you can test and run your application. And then it allows you to hook into your hoster, wherever they may be. As long as you provide the credentials, you can publish your app to the hoster. So it just tries to make everything in one place um, instead of jumping around from different tools or different FTP servers or whatnot. It also allows you to manage your databases as well from here, whether it's MySQL or, or SQL Server. And then thirdly, not thirdly, but there's a million things, but thirdly in my mind, uh, SEO. It allows you to run search engine optimization reports on what you've just created and tells you where there's problems, where you might need to add a meta tag, where you might need to add some proper indexing, where there might be a 404, et cetera. So once this site's created, you can say, run SEO report, tell me what I need to do to make this even greater and better. Um, okay, so before I go further into it, let me keep laying out the introduction here. The site from Web Gallery, that's what I talked about earlier. I said the 40 plus applications that we have that do blog, commerce, etc. Last night what I did is I clicked on this and I opened up the, the commerce site and I'll, I'll jump into that momentarily. 
The other one is site from template. I'm gonna click on this now just to show you. We have really nothing right now, but these are very, very basic rudimentary starter sites, um, either for doing a gallery, such as, such as a photo gallery or a shop or calendaring. Ideally, this, is, this list will grow and we look to you to help grow it. But this is basically if you wanna have, you don't need an application, but you need a site up very quickly and just need to make a couple edits to it to give it the content that you want. This is what you can use. This is good and I encourage it, but even more, I encourage you to use applications. I think that's the future. If you create an application, ideally, it'll be one day serviced by the cloud and consumed by the phone. It's gonna be the same app, the same source code. If you use a site, that's good, but you might be relying on things that only re render in a browser or a PC environment. Um, so you may or may not be, it's up to, you know, up to where the standards go, you may be limiting yourself and you might need to rehaul the site should it need to be a mobile, mobile site. Um, and then lastly, site from folder is exactly what it says it is, is open up a folder. It treats the folders on your hard drive as virtual directories, allows you to open them up and, and view them. So, so, so site from web gallery, I'm gonna actually open up the one that I did last night. I, all I did was, I selected um, uh, NOP Commerce from the gallery. Let me bring this up. And uh, open that up in Web Matrix. I think it's not responding. Let me load it again. Here it is. Okay, so NOP, con so this is, what, this is what Web Matrix looks like when, once you load it up. And in my case, I said open site from Web Gallery, and I clicked on NOP Commerce. And, and I promise you all I did was I, I spent five minutes deleting some of the products that they had, that they had sample data in there that was selling shoes and other things that I'm not selling, and I just I uploaded my own products. So I'm gonna show you how to use that in a second. Um, that's all I did. And everything else is just the raw code. I, didn't, I really didn't touch it. This is what you'll see. So by default, you'll see the fact that you have an arbitrary port that will launch your site. Um, this is what the site looks like on that arbitrary port. Again, I replaced it with charm bracelets instead of selling Adidas shoes. But it builds quite a robust site for you from scratch. And it provides you an administra administration console. This is just one application of 40. So I'm just picking one ram randomly. I encourage you to look at the other ones. But as every site or every app has a forward facing, the public store, it also has an internal facing, the administration side. So all the applications that you will see in the app gallery have the internal facing one that allow you to administer the data, your users, your content, and then has the public facing one, which is the one that you will be showing to your users and, and deploy. So the public store um, for NOP Commerce, again, I didn't edit the logo, it said it's pretty basic, but it allows you to browse different categories. This hooks up to the global payment systems that are available, such as PayPal and, and about four or five others, and allows people to purchase your products online. They can view by categories, they can view by manufacturers, by tags, they can search, they can add things to the shopping cart um, and, and manage their account. I'm, I'm not gonna go into everything, I'm just gonna show you a, a couple things that this, this site has. So one was administration. I've already logged on as me. Um, let me um, show you the, what, what the process looks like to get to that point. I screenshotted it last night to show you. Launch web matrix, create site from gallery, it gives you the list of all the, the applications that are available. I selected e-commerce and uh, allows me to, let me skip it, allows me to pick what e-commerce application I want, okay? Now from here, once you create this, uh, once, sorry, instead of creating it from here, my suggestion, I'm gonna back up here to show you this. This is um, something that I kind of cobbled together. I stole some of this graphics from a site called wix.com, which is a Flash-based website creator, but they just create shared hosting. It's not applications. And what they do is they, what I did was I changed the text here. For you, a business idea is, when you look at the tutorial I'm giving you today, think about this as your marketing engine, your, your logo going here, whatever your company is, and target the consumer. Target the guy that owns a car dealership but has no idea how to get those car dealership deals online. Or the, 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 the woman that wants to sell her flowers online and, and do this. Or the, stu the teachers that want to put their courseware online and be able to teach their classes to students outside of their environment. 
These, all these, like I, again, I, I screenshot it and, and put this in here, but this Moodle is a product that's available in the web app gallery. Our gallery server pro is a, is a photo gallery that's available. So what you can do, this is again stolen content, but what you would do is create something custom like this, and then behind the scenes, what I'm showing you in a very click, click manual way, you can super automate and make it easy for people to get their businesses online through the web app gallery. But for now, this is how it's done. You go to the, the, web, the web matrix, you click on open site from gallery, you select NLP commerce, okay? This is all screenshots from last night that I did. It's gonna ask you to accept the EULA. So I said, okay, accept it. And then it installs. This, this took about, this is where I said this took about four or five minutes because um, it's pulling everything down from the network. Um, ideally on a faster network, it'd be super rapid. And then it's installed. Um, in this case, it's using ASP.NET. It's using a light version of uh, SQL Server. It pulls, pulls that all onto your machine and it's quite a robust application, which I'll show you in a minute. Then once you have it all, all the bits pulled down, the database pulled down, it takes you to this four step wizard. Ideally, I'd like to see this go away, and I'd like this to be the, the, a, a customer, sorry, a company that offers this in the very consumer friendly way that says, get your business online. Because right now, it's slightly complex, like where it says is, enter your SQL server name and IP address, blah, blah, blah. Like my machine's called Santa Claus, so it picks that up. But I, would have, I had to make a choice whether I wanted to use SQL server or integrated Windows authentication. I chose integrated Windows. It's up to you what you want to choose, but I suggest that we take this away from the consumer and just decide for them what they should use. Um, I don't think like someone that is opening up an online business that never used the web would know what the screen meant. So again, this, I think there's an opportunity here for us to kind of skin this and make it a little easier to get businesses online. But behind the scenes, the app is super good. Um, Create a new database, I created a new, gave it a name, I think, I forget, I called it NOP23, and it created a SQL Server database on my local machine. It provided me with an administrative uh, password and uh, ID. This is what I use to log in, so I can see that administrative console that I'm gonna show you in a moment. And that's it, one, two, three, four. Set up the database, get some credentials in place, and then I launched it, I hit run in Web Matrix. And this is what I saw. This is the sneakers and stuff that I removed um, last night and replaced with my own products that I'd like to sell. Um, so so uh, once you click on a product, the other thing that I'll point out to you, this is something when I said earlier in the talk that I felt that I didn't see enough of in the sites that are being created in this region is integration with the social media, social network sites. This one will automatically integrate. You can share with Twitter, email, Facebook, anything about a product, um, the, any product that you have. This is just a standard, um, you've probably seen this component uh, in other places, but what I was uh, surprised not to see is the sites that are being created here in this region are not using this, this functionality. And it's one line of code, which I'll give to you um, later on today. And it uses something called a web helper, which is a free DLL that's available in Web Matrix, allows you to hook into Twitter, Facebook, um, as well as a variety of different other applications, but there's no reason wh when you have any type of content, whether it's an article or a blog post that you wrote, um, a product that you're trying to sell, that you shouldn't be using this. Because what I showed you earlier is when I do a search on Bing, if someone did a like here, when I do a search on Bing and they're my friend, I'm gonna see these shoes available. So you're gonna be able to optimize SEO, optimize your sites through word of mouth, which again is much more powerful than putting a bunch of meta tags in there. Allow, allow your customers to be your fansumers. If they, if they like what you're promoting or selling, give them the opportunity at one click to, to, to share that on the network. The, the one line of code, which if you open up your existing site today, open it up in the web matrix, just uh, install the um, web helper, just hit right click and say add helper. There's a helper for Facebook, Twitter, etc. And it has an object model. It's using the razor syntax here with the at symbol. But it's basically a class, and it has like button. And that like button, will all it asks for is a URL. And when you say you like it, it basically points back to that URL. So any page that you have um, for, with a product on it, just add this one line of code, like onto your product 
master page or um, uh, your PHP page, and then it will have, I don't know PHP what the equivalent is, but it takes one line of code to, to integrate this in there. So let me go back into demo mode. Any questions at this point? Yes. So question is Joomla. When I, when I install Joomla, it requires MySQL, it requires uh, PHP. Um, PHP. Yes, it works on IIS. Okay, what if uh, PHP needs new buttons? <laughs> that was a very hard job for us to do, by the way, yes. to get that respect from Twitter when the guy said, like, finally, Microsoft is a first class citizen when it comes to PHP. That took us several years to catch up. But what if PHP or MySQL release new buttons or new version? So how can I update this? So when I showed you the, um, so the question is how can you keep this updated? When I showed you this web platform installer, this is actually feeding directly from the internet through an XSLT style sheet. Okay, so this is for installing. What about updating? updating? So when, when, once you have it updated, once you open it up in web matrix, it will warn, it'll basically give you a warning. And it happened to me, for example, with WordPress. It'll tell you, by the way, there's a new version ready. Click here to upgrade. For me, it was, Easy. I didn't try Joomla, but WordPress, I said click, click, and like, hmm, okay, everything seems to be okay. So it upgraded seamlessly. But it's not us, it's WordPress. It's not us that's doing it. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. So as long as the app supports that, that very seamless uh, uh, upgrading process, then for sure it works. It worked for blogging. I have my blog on two places I have it on WordPress, all on one server WordPress, PHP, and ASP.NET, blogengine.net, and both. But I don't know Joomla, but I'm assuming, I mean, I know it's very popular, so. It I just, work on Windows 7, or it needs a server? It, well, it's Windows using 7. a server, right? So Windows 7 is a client. So it uses, Windows, for me, I'm using Windows Server 2008. To, 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 yeah. Any other questions? Okay, so now I'm back onto the, the site that I've created. Um, this is the administrative console for the NOP Commerce site. I'm not going to show you everything because I actually don't know everything, but what I'm going to show you is what I found interesting that I, I would personally use. And, I, and again, you can immediately deploy this to your hoster, which I'll get to momentarily. But uh, so I, I clicked on the administrative console. It says I'm logged in with the a, a admin credentials that it gave me. Uh, immediately it takes me to a dashboard, which gives me my revenue, my sales, what, what's going on in terms of the last seven days, whether it's... Um, orders, whether it's new customers that have arrived, whether there's orders that are in process. The, the thing that I found interesting was the catalog because this is a brand new site. I need to put something in there to sell. Otherwise, I, I'm not going to make any money. So the first thing that I went to was the categories area. Uh, the first two are the ones that I've created. The rest of them were sample data. Um, so what I do to, with the sample data is that I hit edit and then I just delete it. I, I don't need that sample data. For new, my own data, let's say I want to add a new category on something that I want to sell. Let's say I'm going to sell pendants. You'll notice that it has a very rich um, editor that allows you to embed Microsoft Word content, images, um, do editing with URLs that allows you to change the border styles, etc. And I can provide you know, some kind of a content here. For the category, I can provide a generic uh, graphic image that will show what this category looks like and then decide whether this is going to be shown on the home page or not. So I had done that for um, and, and, and a, a bunch of different things, like what are the price ranges in this category. Like you can, if you're selling computers, you can say low-end computers, high-end computers, and give it, give it a price range. But um, the only thing that's required is the name. So I created those categories. And then when you go to the public store, which is the, the home front, you'll see this category, which I called Charm Bracelet. And I uploaded a random picture of one of my bracelets to, to serve as a placeholder for that category. So the next thing, once you have those categories in place, the next thing that you'd want to do is add products, things to sell. So you go to the products um, administrative console, you select products, and then you can see all the products that are available. Um, a lot of this is a sample data, but there's some that I've created this morning and last night that have some of the, the, the charms that I'd like to sell. 
and, and again, you can um, go ahead and add new. The other thing that's super useful about this catalog is that you can export it as a PDF. So if you're having like a newsletter of some sort, an email, and you want to market your, your catalog to other people, you can send that as a PDF and it'll show whatever category that you have available. So I don't know, let me see what I have on my system. Um, let me find something random to sell. Um, let's see, click on a name. I will sell, let's see, this horse. Okay, let's give it a name, horse. So what I can do is create a product that's called horse, sterling silver. I can provide a description, blah, blah, blah. And then um, here I can actually upload different images of it if I want to. I can select the image property, add a URL, upload it here, um, multiple images. Or I can provide the image that's going to show on the home page um, or say that it's going to show on, show on the home page. The thing that I also like about this is there's some things that I actually want to showcase as kind of a, a museum to inspire people to make charm bracelets, not sell them. So what you can also do is say that you do not want to enable the buy option, disable the buy button, and in, in, in that case you're showing it off as a catalog, like as a, as a tricked up model that people can make themselves, um, whether it's like a t-shirt or a surfboard, something that you want to showcase that is like cool and fancy, like what you would do if you physically walked into a store like for example, Kiehl's, they have a Harley Davidson there. You're not gonna buy a Harley Davidson in Kiehl's. However, it's just showing you like ambiance. So you can, you can select that. Um, you can set a price for it, um, uh, the, the previous price and how much it costs you. So then you can determine your revenue, what your profit is, what your profit margin is, based on whether this item sells or not, et cetera. You can allow customers, remember I showed you the Facebook integration, allow them to review and rate your products and so you can extend your, your reach further. And um, again, up, upload different images and, and provide different um, settings in terms of how many you have in stock, what, what kind of alert will be function when you're running low in stock. Do you want to take it down from the website? Do you want to have it be available that people can still buy? Do you allow for back ordering, et cetera? So it provides all these different options, and then once you're ready, you just hit save. Um, other optimization that's available is the SEO. So you can provide metadata for it to come up, bubble up in the rankings. You can cross-sell. So you know Amazon, if you like this book, you can also, you might be interested in this. That's what you can do with the related products here. You can add a bunch of related products to it and allow it, the cross-selling capabilities to this once you save it, which I didn't. And then likewise, you can upload pictures. And what this does is when you select the pictures to upload, it'll allow you to browse your hard drive and then it will upload them directly into the images directory on this virtual machine. This will come into play later when we go to deploy, meaning everything will deploy to your hoster as a single unified package. So you don't have to sit there, hunt and peck and, and FTP the sites. So going back to the public store, looking at a random product I created this morning is a charm of Africa. I said allow the customer to, to rate it and review it. I didn't really write any description, et cetera. Um, people can email each other. This was the old price, this is the new price, so there's obviously a promotion going on. And then people can read the reviews. So for any of you, I know I met at least three companies today that are creating their own stores online. Do you see how fast? I mean, this took me 13 minutes last night to create five or six products online. And then I have a ser my server is in the U.S. right now. I'm relocating to Egypt. Um, but what I, what all I have to do from WebMatrix's viewpoint is just configure my server to, let me launch WebMatrix, um, configure my server to um, have the settings and credentials that I, I would like to use. So let me just go ahead and open this, and I'll show you how to set those. So if it, again, if it's in the, in the U.S., uh, Egypt, it doesn't matter. All I have to do is select Publish. But before I do, I need to set the settings for publishing. So what it's asking me here for is, where is my hoster? What are, this, what, are, what are the settings for my hoster? This is very similar for you to FTP it. There's one caveat here. Um, the hoster, we went through a very arduous process from November until January when we launched WebMatrix. This launched um, right beginning of February, actually. Um, the hosters that we work with in MIA, we have about, I think, 11 WebMatrix certified hosters in this region. They actually 
will 100% support these applications. And all you have to do is provide the server name, username, and password, and it's there. For those hosters that are not supporting that, contact me so I can get the right team in place so we can get them, get them uh, to be a web matrix partner. And for the, for the hosters that are not, we just have to make, run a couple tests to make sure that all 40 of these apps work great with no hitches uh, on, the, on their system, and then you'll be able to deploy this way. If not, you also have the capability of looking at all the files. This is traditional deployment. You guys know this already. But it's a, dire it's a virtual directory. It has files inside of it. You can FTP it. But ideally, what you'd want to do is be able to hit publish, publish your site, and, and, and run with it. Now, for our region, it's especially of interest that we have this ability to say, find web hosting. We have, we're inundated with requests from, offers from the US, from the UK, internet down, um, from the US and the UK to market to our, um, to our customers here. So Canada, Netherlands, um, UK, Germany, and US constantly um, target the customers that we're trying to target and provide hosting offers to them. So what we, what we, what we did to work around that, if I can get online, is um, created a web hosting gallery. And it allows you to filter by country to see what kind of web hostings are available. It's in Turkish because I, I did a presentation in Turkey last week. Let me just change it to English. Um, so it allows you to see what hosting offers are available in your country um, in this gallery. And if you guys have hosters or if you are a hoster, let us know. Um, and, and we will make sure that we provide that for you. And basically, once this gets to be English again, um, basically what you would do is uh, uh, submit the hosting offer to the gallery from the country, and then me as a user, or me as a developer, uh, or a C CEO of a company, I can see what hosting offers are available in my specific region. So if I, if I want, you know, specifically want to go to, let's say, um, let me go to MIA, um, let me pick Lebanon, I know that we have none here. I'm looking for some. But if I selected Lebanon, this is where I would see the Lebanese hosters. We have UAE. We're working on Jordan. We have Egypt. Um, we have South Africa. We have Turkey. Um, so these will be available to you in, in the currency of your country. We're looking for more. Um, I know they exist. We are happy to help subsidize and, and partner with the hosters. Um, so for, for this specific area, it would be UAE that we would work with. And then once you select that, once you find the hoster, the web matrix allows you to immediately sign up. Once your site is the way you want it to be, you deploy to that site. Also, in addition to having those deployment options, um, you can also um, set up remote publishing for your site to be op making updates on a regular basis as you wish it to be. Earlier I had mentioned the reports that are available. Currently, right now, we have the search engine optimization report where you can run this report. I'm going to see if, if it's going to take a long time, but I can run a report and do analysis on my site down below and say X amount of URLs. It's going through all the URLs. This is quite a big site, so I might actually stop it. But um, it's going to go through all the URLs, 108 URLs, and make sure that they're not broken, make sure the metadata on that page is bubbling them up appropriately to, to the site. And then it's going to show analysis and suggestions on how I can make my, my site pop up faster. It's almost done. I think we can let this run. And, and, and give me those results. And then I can make changes directly in Web Matrix using the code, um, code editing tools that are available. Why is it adding more? OK, here we go. Um, so it's saying, like for example, on this one page, the H1 tag is missing. Um, and again, this is actually a shrink wrap, not shrink wrap, but a published application. So you can imagine like what else you could find on your own custom ones. Um, so uh, this is disallowed by the robots text file. And then what you can do is just drill down into these pages. You know, where, where are we having this H tag missing? It gives you information about what's going on, what the recommendations are. Simply just add a, a tag uh, for this. You can change the rules of the report also to maybe there's something that you're doing you, you know is not a standard, but you don't care. Um, then you can just have it ignore that particular rule. And you can run them on a regular basis. Like I, I ran one on my personal website. I had a lot of problems, um, uh, my, my blog engine one. So 
I edited them, I cleaned them up, I had some broken URLs, etc. So again, you can run them on a regular basis and save them and uh, um, rerun the reports should, should you need to. Other functionality that we have, again, is super lightweight. This is not Visual Studio. If you want Visual Studio, you can definitely open it up from here. But it allows you to manage your um, database connections um, and, and, and information. Again, not just SQL Server, which is what I'm using for NLP Commerce, but also for um, MySQL PHP. Um, I'm not going to drill too much far into it because I'm not going to make any edits. Um, and then lastly, just administering your, the details of your files. I can click on a particular file, and I can go ahead and edit the content of that file. I, and again, I want to stress to you that this is not Visual Studio. It's not meant to replace Visual Studio. If you want Visual Studio, we created a button here for you. There is a free edition of Visual Studio called Visual Studio Express that if you don't want to pay for it, you can install. Um, but what this, uh, again, allows you to do is open up an existing template, open up an existing site, create something from scratch, and then be able to deploy that to one of the web matrix hosters. Any questions on the tool? Yes. <laughs> yeah, so no, it's a good question. Um, we have a setting. Let me, let me see how I get to it. There's a setting to run it in different browsers. I think it's a, if I just click this. Yeah, so uh, if I click the run button, it'll, this is what I have installed on my machine. So it'll use what I have in, installed on my machine and run it in that, or I can open in all browsers. Now, it doesn't necessarily solve the problem that things might look funny. In, in different um, browsers. That's, again, it's still a problem. I hope HTML5 will address that, that we will all agree on standards and support these standards. Um, maybe I would think that one of our partners could create a report for this that looks for anomalies and says, hey, when you're using border radius, it's going to look like this in Chrome and it's going to look like this in IE. The, the thing that we have here is that you can look at them in all browsers, but it's not, it's not an ideal answer. Question over here? The, the gallery application? Yeah. So yeah. there's two different types, right? So the question is like, are these the applications that are available, are these, let me open up another instance. So there's two types of applications that are available. One are called site from template, which are sites. They're not really apps, okay? So like the coffee shop one, um, it's, it's kind of cool because, uh, the, sorry, the bakery one, it's kind of cool because it shows you some of the uh, implementation of the web helpers. And I think, like, from what I understand in terms of um, the support from the product team is that we'll allow, I want something, um, <laughs> so um, we'll allow support for you guys to create new templates. Like, let's say you want to, you're a consulting company and you want to create a template for managing a project. What I understand from our engineers is that we'll support the addition of them. I'm not sure if I'm very keen on that because they're, they're sites, right? So let's take a look at this site. Um, let me open it up here. So this is one example. It's, it's a coffee, sh sorry, I keep saying coffee shop. Oh, it is a coffee shop. It's a bakery site. And I'm like, why is where they get coffee from? And it shows integration with like Twitter, for example. This is a web helper. It's going live to Twitter and it's pulling on the hash bakery. So if you go behind the scenes and look at it, it's cool that it has that. So that's one. And yes, we've created it. That's why it's not that beautiful. Um, what we also have in Web Matrix is um, when you create a new site is the applications. That's the 40 plus. Those aren't us. We, we do have one that's us. Uh, let me uh, open up a browser instance. Let's go to Microsoft.com. I, I meant uh, why do you include specifically those 40? I know they are not Why do we include those? Yeah, is there a, a probability that you add more apps? Yeah, yeah we want to add more apps. Yes, yes, they can. Uh, so here's the get web apps. You can pull them down from here. It, I think we were at like 30, maybe six months ago. Now we're at 40. So that like, gives you an idea about growth. Um, there is a submit app functionality here. But again, I said this earlier. This, this takes a bunch of people to approve it. I can help with that. 
We're a little, I mean, we're a little bottlenecked right now trying to get some of the Arabic applications um, uploaded, but you can submit your web application. It gives you specific packaging guidelines. They're really easy. I mean, if you're a developer, you know these. It just basically behave like an application should behave like. But you follow these guidelines, and then you upload it, and then th there's a couple other requirements is that there's a human being that's going to stand by this app that's saying, like, let's say you take um, WordPress and you do an Arabic version of WordPress. You as a human being, a community member, must say that when WordPress, the main branch, gets updated, that the Arabic version also gets updated. So that somebody that deploys it doesn't get pissed off that they're using something super old. Um, if you're creating something completely new from scratch, then again, you follow these guidelines and it requires that you have a home page where, you can de where, where people can go for more information. What we want to avoid is the hoster that there's so many hosters, right? There's only 12 in Mia, but worldwide there's like hundreds. So all these hosters have to support your app. So what we want to do is make sure that you have a community, a forum, a website that people can go to if they have problems with your app. And if you have those in place, then it's a matter of like, if there's a demand for it, people like it, you have an audience, then we will put it in there. Right now it tends to be the more popular ones, because it's, you know, we're, we're early, I think we started this maybe two and a half years ago, so it's not like a super, you know, old project. But um, we will accept submissions. I really, really want them in our languages here, um, in the local languages. I gotta turn off my outlook. Um, so, uh, we, yes, yeah, so we will support those. Those are the ones um, there. And again, it doesn't have to be .NET. It can be PHP and MySQL. Um, the, the idea is that it runs on Windows Server 2008. We had one question up here, I think, somewhere. No? Okay, yes. I've been through what you have done last night. I decided to make a website. I used WordPress, and uh, it was an easy thing to do for, uh, for a regular person. Mm -hmm. But I cannot see the difference between uh, the web matrix and the WordPress other than the hosting integration. Uh, okay, so what's the difference between WordPress and the package standing alone versus web matrix? WordPress, so my blog, let's go to my WordPress blog, okay, I can go onto the website, I can administer, this is probably what you did last night, and um, I don't know if I'm logged in, um, but this is the web-based console, right, so I'm editing whatever allows me to edit, um, whatever WordPress allows me to edit, I don't even remember my password, let me see if I can try to log in, um, I'm not going to try, I forget, but, oh wait, it is admin. <laughs> don't don't tell anyone. Let's see if I can remember my password. No. Um, but when I log into this, it takes me to the console for WordPress, and there I can change, you know, the, the theme, the settings, blah, blah blah, the metadata on what my site looks like, which is easy to do. My mother can do it. It's super, you know, simple. But in Web Matrix, the difference between WordPress and Web Matrix is that here I can actually go directly into the database, change the data in the database. I can go to the source code. I don't know PHP, so I can't really change um, the Web Matrix, but I can change, uh, obviously, ASP.NET and HTML5. And I can go directly to the source code and make edits here and change them. I can add my own style sheets and, and, and my own plugins and helpers. So Web Matrix is more about managing the source and then the WordPress administrative console. I didn't answer your question, I don't think. No. Okay. I guess they make it yes, I, yeah, I see that the hosting integration is yes. the new thing in uh, the old campus. Uh -huh. Other than the, for example, I could edit, new versus what you mean? I could edit the HTML and the change and add customize even the, uh, the, the response of uh, some buttons and even the uh, programming right, right, right. on WordPress. In, in WordPress itself, yeah. you could, you're right. Um, the, the, that, okay, I understand what you're saying now. Um, the hosting integration, maybe the browser, again, it's not to be a replacement for Visual Studio, it's super lightweight. So for WordPress, the robustness of WordPress, likely you can pretty much do what you're doing in editing the source code in WordPress. Maybe a lot of the applications, maybe a lot of competitor tools to this. Um, so at that point, yeah, the, the, the differential might be slight. Yeah. Well, the 
Mm -hmm. the, the, the helpful thing is the, the uh, web helpers. Have you tried them? The, you can install web helpers for inside a web matrix. Those are, I think we have like 12 or so of them growing, but those are the ones that I said one line of code for Facebook, et cetera. That could be something of value, but again, you could still do that in Notepad if you wanted to. So, so you're right. Like, I mean, there's definitely, you don't have to use this. It's not your go-to tool. And in fact, even the deployment thing, you can still deploy through FTP. You can go to the web hosting gallery, as I did from the website, and, and choose it. So you're not limited to this. Another? Yes, go ahead. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, so the yes, so question is, you know, is there any integration with Visual Studio? What's the story between for designers versus developers? Um, there is no integration with Visual Studio except for the fact that you can open the same source in Visual Studio. I don't really call that integration. I just call it another window into the same code. The integration that we do have is Visual Studio and Expression. I mean, your, your web matrix is, again, not trying to compete or cannibalize that share. If you're a designer, you use expression blend, expression web, edit your code, do your animations, your storyboarding, the things that you can't do in Visual Studio in a very dark room like setting. And then the, the coder, the developer, can go right in and edit the code behind. You, you will still work like that. This is not, again, meant to replace that. It's definitely not intended for, it's intended for like a new, somebody new, someone new. The biggest thing that it does, it makes it more easier for people to access the applications. A lot of people didn't know about these. They're creating sites from scratch. New people, not knowing about the, the applications that are available for free from, from our partners. Yes, Yeah, then you can use the publish option. Once you set the hosting option, then you publish from there. That's a, that's a good scenario. You could do that. Uh, behind you? Yes. Sorry, uh, when you go, uh, if I go to, uh, <coughs> into the store and pick some application or website, yeah. does those applications need a certain standard or are going to be based on uh, a certain architecture? Because I have some concern, especially when I go to the customization. I'm going to answer the second part of your question first. The how, what happens if like I make customizations and then they update the code base and you know everything gets messed up and I lose my changes or I lose I don't I, I can't update because I don't want to overwrite my changes. I don't know PHP, but for ASP.NET, what you do is you work with partial classes. You create all your customization in a partial class. IntelliSense will pick that up as a single class. It'll treat that as one. Just do not make edits in their code. Make edits in a partial class, give it the same name, same exact name, but make it a, call it a partial class. And then what happens is the files that you made will physically stay separate. You can even put them in a different directory. And then when you uh, upgrade and all your changes come down, the editors will be intelligent enough to bring them together. I don't know what, if PHP has something like, you know PHP, does it have something like partial classes? Yeah. Okay, so. The fact it depends on the uh, You have two other options. One is to create all these applications support this. Theming, if it's going to be a UI type of thing, um, create a theme, put everything in there, your controls, your cascading style sheet. If it's a functional functionality that you're adding, you create a plugin. All these applications have plugins. Keep it separate and independent. Now, you asked a question about standards. Uh, what do you mean by standards? Like, like HTML5 type standards or 
What kind of standards? Uh, in fact, about uh, the layback of architecture and layering <coughs> applications, some of them go to uh, four layers uh, or four uh, uh, some others go to nine layers, but are logical layers. <laughs> Let's take, let's, let me pause you and let's take that offline because I think this might be a little more complicated. I want to understand okay. it better. Let's, but I'm here, so we'll, we'll talk about it. Okay. Just one second for questions. Yeah. Do you want to? Yeah, I want to distribute these. Uh, the, these are uh, called DreamSpark, Microsoft Dream, DreamSpark. They contain dev tools from Microsoft, including Visual Studio 2010. Uh, we, usually we give them to students, but since you're all in, on, entrepreneurship students, so. We're gonna give you uh, all these for free. Uh, they contain uh, SQL, uh, 2008 R2, Visual Studio 2010, XNA gaming for Kinect and Xbox, so. Right, those, those are available. They have a special activation they, code. There's a special activation code, and all this is uh, fully uh, authentic. Okay. Thank you, thank you. Um, uh, where, how are we on time? How much time do I have? Five minutes, okay. Let me spend the rest of it taking questions because you can download the deck separately. I, I've done most of the demo. Okay. Yeah, the question is, is there any integration with the gateways? I don't know them off the top of my head which gateways they are, but if you go to uh, the web app gallery, and uh, let's do get, get web apps, I can just tell you right away what they are. Um, for, let's see, I know PayPal is one. I know Jordan now supports, as someone told me today, two weeks ago they support it. Let's take a look at the gateways that we support here. Uh, let's see, I think it was this one. And I know that you know that payment's always an issue here um, in this region, but we have PayPal, Google Checkout, Two Checkout, and and more. At least in one app. So I don't know if that answers does that answer some of your questions. Most of them did. All the popular global ones are supported. If you're finding something missing, you know, let us know. Any other question? Yes. I have a question uh, with, regard, uh, with regards to the uh, web matrix for each domain, assuming you have. Uh, so I didn't understand. So you have different developers and designers. Are you asking me if you have this install each time? Hey, can we just keep it down in the room so I can I want to hear the question? Let's say you're a web developer and you serve several different clients. Do you have to install the web matrix for each domain? For each domain, ah, uh, no, no, you do not. You don't have to have it because right now I'm using a local domain. Okay. I hope I'm answering your question. And then my hosting, my site, is somewhere else on slingalibi.com. Oh, so yes, yeah, so I'm using two. Let's yeah. say you have three, five different sites. Yes. Okay. Let's uh, say you want to install WordPress on one of them. You would just need one installation of one matrix. Uh, you would. Yeah. What what matrix is your tool to? Yes. You need one. Again, answer your question is yes. Just one installation. One, one yeah, because if you notice, I'm running it multiple times already. You know, so I have three web matrixes going. Each of those could administer a different slice, like two, two, one on WordPress, one plugin, and one. Each of them, each one of them is associated with a different domain name. No, they're not. The one is associated with all my domain names. Whatever one I open up, I can point it to a different domain name. So this, with instance, I have two domains that I'm pointing to. Maybe all three of these are pointing to one, or maybe they're all they're pointing to two different. Yeah, you can whatever you want. You can mix and match. I think I'm out of time. I'm going to be here hanging out, um, and afterwards, um, I think that we have another speaker, right? Right. So I'll be in the back of the room to answer any of your questions. So thank you for your time. Um, everything is downloadable from my uh, website today, so you can pull it down. So thank you. Thanks.